Brian Cusco here at Triple B, and today we're sitting down with Kina and Spencer at Exotic Entities, and we're going to check out all their snakes. They've got a really nice variety here. You're watching, watching Triple, Triple B, B TV. How does this all start for both of you? Like, you guys are both obviously. I keepers. started through her. Okay. So in college, um, I wanted to get uh, a pet. So I'm actually allergic to dogs and cats, but I kind of tolerate Margo when she's you know short hair. So and I. And your tolerance has been building. Yeah, my so tolerance is building, and I wanted something I could interact with that wasn't too high maintenance, because I was in college, I was a student, full units, all that good stuff. Um, and decided I want to get something. So I started off with a crystal ball python. I still have him today. And Shit, humble beginnings. <laughs> yeah, humble, be humble beginnings. And from there, I just my interest grew and grew, and I'm. So the crystal ball python. How long ago was that? The crystal ball it's like python. Two years ago. Two years ago. Okay, so you put that at the mm -hmm. beginning of EOP. Mm -hmm. That so was just before uh, mm -hmm. actually moving into the dorms, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, two years ago. That, two. that was two years ago for you, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I got into it basically the summer of last year. Of last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, you, guys, you guys are fresh. Yeah, yeah. we're still pretty fresh. We're, we're still pretty fresh. Uh, me more so than her because I'm, I'm just like, all right, let me learn everything before I start trying to chase my own dreams. I'm just like, all right, let me learn this stuff before I get too ambitious. You did your research beforehand. Mm -hmm. I jumped right into it. So that's why I don't own at my own house or anything is because if I was keeping at my house, I would totally probably trash it. You you say you have faith in me, but I'm like, okay, I don't have any idea. Plus you have a dick cat. In the... I do have a dick cat. <laughs> he, he would probably unlatch one of the enclosures or something and eat a corn snake or something. And it's just like, come on, dude. But, um, I don't know. It, so the crystal, the crystal ball python, like, what, how did you Actually, wait, go that's from... my beginning too, I guess. Because hmm? you dumped him in my lap in class. That's kind of the introduction. <laughs> you talk about that. Back in, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna bring it everywhere. Then I'm like, oh, yeah. that's stressful. Oops. Back, I didn't know back that. in everyone's beginning stage when they're like, ah, in the uh, in the honeymoon phase of owning snakes, I guess. She she would bring them to class. <laughs> also because it was a thing of, oh, calm down. It's not that bad. <laughs> that's so embarrassing. It's fucking embarrassing. I mean, everyone everyone in your classes knew about them, so it's. It's really not Again, I don't do that anymore, obviously. Like, I'll bring them to expos or whatever. But hey, you know, I, I used to bring my snake to class. <laughs> um, I, maybe not in my lap necessarily, but I did. When I was when I was in like second grade, I would bring my snake to class, and like the cl class would get to check out the snake. That's I, awesome. I always wonder if you could still do that today. You know? Yeah, you can. Yeah, probably. But uh, there there are some people who try and be like, no, not at all. It depends on the teachers now. Yeah. Plus, also when I was a kid, I always would. So we lived in, you know, Fleetwood. Yeah. I there would be all these little snakes, like garter snakes. I just, pick, I, I was never afraid of them. My mom was like, oh my god, you know, because she's, she was terrified, and I just pick them up and I would like them. And frogs, we used to have a pond in the backyard, all these little frogs and toads, and I would play with them and kind of like listen to them at night. And I just always, I was never afraid of snakes. I've always had a fascination with them. I was, <laughs> I was afraid of them before you. Uh, before you, I was, pretty much. Uh, it was a healthy respect. It was, uh, I'm not gonna touch them or get too close to them because I'm pretty sure I know what they can do, but now I'm like, what was I thinking? Because now I've handled Cecilia more times than I can count. I've reached into Boa's enclosures where it's like, shouldn't you use a hook? And it's like, yeah, but I know the snake. <laughs> Like, you, you build that rapport with them and you see that you were wrong to assume every snake is the same and they're evil. So I kind of come from it from the opposite of you. Mm -hmm. I did have those bad notions where it's like, oh, goodness. Yeah. Also, I grew up with my mom, you know, being like very fear this, fear that. But if anything, I would be attracted towards it. Right. So, again, snakes are bad, you know, this that, and that. That's, that's the parent's greatest fear, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, don't, don't do this, and then that's like mm -hmm. usually what the kid mm -hmm. ends up doing. Mm -hmm. The kid gets the bright eyes and jumps for it. <laughs> they want it so bad. Mm -hmm. So, you you only been keeping a couple years, but you've been into it, like, you've always had a fascination mm -hmm. for, yeah. for them. Just never actually kept a snake mm -hmm. or any reptile or amphibian mm -hmm. in, your, in, your, uh, in an enclosure, I guess. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well I, well, I think we can bust out some animals and yeah. Yeah. I know you got a lot of cool stuff. Hey. 
I do like this. I've got control over the camera while it's happening. I usually like I'll usually do this after. Like yeah. we'll talk and we'll show the snake and then I'll come back and we'll get them all out a second time yeah. and do that. This this is much yeah. this So is I am actually working on uh, creating some captive bred uh sunbeam so um I have a male, he's a little smaller, but this female is actually pretty good size and I want to make some more captive breads. Um, I have some wild caught species of other stuff and want to make some yeah, captive bred um, animals. So I think that'd be interesting and just give it a shot. It's been done a few times, especially with these snakes, but just having more of them because they are so in high demand right now and they are an amazing snake and they are very low maintenance. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I call sunbeams pet dirt because you kind of put them in a tub with dirt. That's it. You don't really see him much. You don't handle him much. I handle him. I handle them once a week, maybe twice. Take a picture. So it's like, hey. Take a picture. Make sure they're go. alive. Clean their poop. Feed, uh, give them more water. And that's about it. Replace right. some of the lost substrate. Mm -hmm. that sunbeam was definitely an appropriate name for this snake. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. without a doubt. <laughs> that iridescence is pretty it's unparalleled. Yeah, I don't know if you want to get the phone. Maybe even get the phone. You want to get your, uh, yours? Okay, yeah. Well... Well, we'll see if that yeah, so. increases it at all. <sighs> yeah, that, that increased it. I was going to say we don't need it, but that definitely, yeah. uh, you can really see the greens, which is like the middle of the spectrum yeah. that you don't really mm -hmm. see. Goodness. <laughs> it, it blows me away every time looking under a phone or actual light. God. The same with um, Thanatos. Yeah, his, um, his luster is insane. Because some of them just don't, some of them just don't, and his is so present. Dude, that is that is just amazing. I've never actually uh, done the phone. Well, I've just never seen a, a sunbeam out right in front of my face like this. Oh, yeah? Pretty incredible. Yeah. Holy crap. Our southern white-lipped Thanatos. Dude, this guy's got some size on him. Yeah, he mm -hmm. does. Had him for about a year now. In Funny Vegas. enough, he's also kind of a picky eater. Well, yeah. sometimes. He has been in the past. And I mean, he was really pissy to start, mm -hmm. but you worked with him and he's really... He's not that bad. He, he, he'll hiss at you and huff at you when he's out too long or if he's not wanting to come out of his enclosure, but that's it. He's not bitey unless you're food. You guys are killing the iridescent snake game I right know, off right? the bat. Yeah. yeah. We've also got a Brazilian rainbow bush. I think she, just, she also just ate so little bit. Yeah. But yeah, we got a lot of questions about him at the expo. Like what kind of questions? Uh, a lot of the time it was, what's his maximum size gonna be? What kind is he, of course. Um, is he for sale? <laughs> is he for sale? That's always a good one. That's my favorite question. Yeah, one, one of the best ones. Are they for sale? <laughs> uh, a lot of people asking how long he was. Uh, at the expo, I think he was five and a half. He was like six. Mostly basic questions that everyone asks. I think we also made we, got we we made a note card because there was so much basic information that just needed to be regurgitated all the time. Because you get a lot of people at those uh, educational shows. Which show was this? Uh, this was in uh, Pleasant. Uh, Pleasanton. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, at the at the county fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I was really hoping to make it to that one. It's, it's tough for me to get away on the weekends right now, man. Crazy enough, it was actually. It wasn't more busy than Pomona, I don't think. Oh, pff, but Pomona's the ultimate. I know it is, which is why I'm like, I, I don't think it's fair to say that, but. We got more action at our at our booth than we did at Pomona, like. At Pomona, we had a pretty good uh, amount of attention, but that was mostly because of Brutus. I miss yeah, we all do. Um, but Who, who's Brutus? Uh, oh, Brutus shares, is um, uh, Cuban. Cuban. Uh, oh yeah, 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 the I Cuban got, rocket. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got him. I got him on. Yeah, yeah he really was. Good. He was awesome because he was so calm and all that. Everyone was like, "Is that real?" <laughs> that he would like. That was the most like, irritating <gasps> question. Was is that real? It's like, <laughs> no, we bring fake <laughs> things to this expo because yes. Yeah, we, talked about, actually a taxidermist we talked about feeding thing? him pistachio ice cream or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was the booth, like the like cutting vegetables group, and I think they just took some. Yeah. <laughs> they did. The attention she yeah, got was insane. So she also likes to pull down my glasses and is probably the main reason I'm not going to wear them today. <laughs> so because of reflection. I that too. I think, I think uh, 
right over there. I need, I need to, uh, I think I need to touch this next Yeah, time. that's, that's fair. She pooped already today, so I think you're safe. Yeah, you should be safe. Uh, not only is she gorgeous, uh, when she's right out of the water and right out of shed, She's got an the incredible cool. iridescence. She has, I mean, has one now, but it's... You know. she, she's got a slight one right now, but she she's a little dry because she, <laughs> she's had enough of the water today. We had to give her a bath because she went and took that giant dump. Look at that face, man. You know, I yeah, love her look. Got, she has a little orange spot above her eye. She's got like a, an orange eyebrow. You can see it on her... Uh, left eye? On her left eye. Let's see. Can we get it in the camera? Show it off, girl? She's ah. like, no. You, you can see it yourself then. Oh, that, oh, the little orange eyebrow? Yeah, she's got a little orange eyebrow, if she'll allow it to be in focus. Probably I'll, not, I'll, for, I'll force it to be in focus. <laughs> Come on! There you go. Oh yeah, there you have it. You can see it for a few frames. There. There's, the there's that little... Eyebrow. Yeah. But how long would we say she is right now? Six. Six, six feet? Six, 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 six. Yeah. Mm. Common question we got about her was how much does she weigh? Because I was... I was pretty much wearing her at the expo because uh, they keep those things way too cold, so she needed body heat. So wanted to make sure she kept on me pretty much the whole time. <laughs> and from what I've what I've observed, boa species do tend to be uh, more Clingy. dense too, oh, like yeah. their muscle their yeah. muscle. Cool. Is, uh, uh, it's it's clear. It's a uh, it's a definite difference between species because yeah. so I can I, I can like... remember Cecilia at this size. She definitely wasn't this weight at this size, but uh, Cecilia at this size, and we're gonna pull her out later. Um, Cecilia at this size was light as a feather. She was probably 30 pounds at this size. 20, maybe. 20 pounds, even. Uh, Iris is probably a solid 45. Look at that belly, dude. I, oh yeah, I love oh, the yeah. pickle. I've dreamed about keeping an anaconda. I just have there, There's a lot of species I dream about keeping. Oh, same. And, and uh, so she's a yellow. And right, the belly yeah. is the giveaway. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, that, that, that was one of the most common questions from afar. Was it she, is she green or yellow? Mm -hmm. she, people go, green? And it's like, and no, then go, yellow. And, and then I would go, there. And they're like, <laughs> and, and it, it was simple. I wasn't like manhandling or anything. I would just kind of reveal up here or under the neck, like, see, she's yellow. And that's all it takes. I've gotten some people saying she could possibly be a like a partial hybrid, but... Regardless, I still love her the same. She's you yeah. know, mainly yellow, 75%. People have said 75 yellow, 25 green, but... That's what I, I was wondering, because when we were first looking, I mean, I see the belly, of course, like mm -hmm. you said, but when I was first looking, I was like, I, I, my top. thought was yellow when you brought it out of the cage, but I was like, or am I wrong? Yeah, am I, am I <laughs> yeah, seeing I've, something else? Yeah, some like, people, I've gotten, like, no, she's pure, no, she's hybrid, but again, regardless, I, I love her the same. Uh, I always just kind of operate on safe side. I know for a fact she's yellow, and she's mainly yellow, so I identify her as a yellow. If I find out later she's a hybrid, I'll start identifying her as a hybrid, but as we know it, she's a yellow anaconda. Um, I definitely had to educate a lot of people that these aren't the man-eaters they see in movies. Uh, these then, aren't. These also aren't the ones that are even close to man-eaters in movies, because yeah, uh, yeah. those are the greens. Right. You know, the, ones the, get like, <laughs> the ones that get like 25 plus feet you know, like the, out in the wild. The big, big ones. Yeah, the big ones. I like the yellow species because again, she's I love the yellow. I don't know if they've seen one. I don't know if was they've it seen 13? one back quite, quite 25. That's, that's like, yeah. probably like in the wild and like to take the pictures. In the, yeah, in the, in the wild. But, you know. Not captive, obviously. I believe they say reported 25. Reported yeah, yeah, 30 right, right, feet. Right, right. Whether or not it actually is, <laughs> it, we'll, we'll find out one day. But um, Titanoboa. Yeah. <laughs> when Titanoboa <laughs> comes back. Uh, <laughs> that'd be a day. Yeah, my, my boys... Uh, would really be pretty excited about that. And they're they're p pretty big Titanoboa fans. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there she goes. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're only halfway through, and this has turned out to be like one of the better Snake for Friends episodes. I, I would I would yeah, say. That's <laughs> just the the variety, and then you guys. Yeah, I like to. I don't like. I like variety. It's it's challenging at times, but I feel <laughs> like it also brings out like a you know just a lot of um, awareness. Yeah. Instead of, you know, treating all the snakes the same, mm. because people will be like, for, go from ball pythons to something else, and they treat all snake species the same, which is obviously false, but just having a varied awareness and uh, knowledge Also just varied helpful. experience. Like... Chubby, chubby cheeks. Nope. Oh. Like, I'm thinking back to when I was around and it was mostly ball pythons. Balls and bows. And that was... It wasn't, like, a bad experience or anything, but just caring for ball pythons makes it... 
like you're right it can be a lot to manage at times and those are the times where you're like uh, have i gotten too far ahead of myself but then you remember that you're not where you are with ball pythons and only ball pythons where it's repetitive work and you'd never do anything with them they're just that pet rock sometimes oh my God. So, i mean some sometimes they can be you you know it's true <laughs> and yeah they're great and i will never bash someone for owning one because I love ours, but if you only have them, that's gonna be repetitive work and it's gonna kinda get you a little disillusioned with the hobby, I imagine. But it's with, kinda like a like variety is the spice of life. Yeah, exactly. Variety is the spice of life. And I think that's the appeal of owning so many kind of exotics. Mm -hmm. Is that it's like, alright, it's a it's a breath of fresh air. We don't have to stick to only one thing. We can and that's great about this hobby too, is you can expand as much as you want. And I mean, and then there's like the fascination of like, this tiny little thing is technically venomous. Like it's, it's rear fang, but- oh, yeah, Someone I've, called I've... a hognose a hot and I was oh. like, what? Oh. I'm like, that's not a big, excuse me. I mean, it's warm, let's call it warm. Yeah, that's a good, that's a better way of putting it. I've gotten that rear fang in one of my fingers one time, and I remember there is a distinct moment when you know it goes in because you feel it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't feel too pretty. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I've never been bitten like... by one, but I'm not. I'm not excited for the day it does ever happen. Yeah. It's, it's, it's almost it. always a feeding response because they're, oh, yeah, you know, they're 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 false bluff strikes for defensiveness. But when they when he's they're hungry, it was one that was hungry and it was trying yeah. to eat me, so it's like chewing. So it's like, oh, it's cute. And then that back fang gets in. And then you kind of once it's done, then you're like, ooh, not so cute. So this, so this guy's a rescue. You're Pretty a much. Rescue. Uh, he, he's a success story. Uh, when we got him, we got a pretty negative sentence. Pretty much, like we'd be surprised if we ever see a picture of him again. Like if, if he makes it home. That's what the people uh, that you uh, essentially, because he was from a vet clinic, right? Mm -hmm. Or they were taking care of him at a vet clinic. Yeah, they were taking care of him at a vet clinic. She was like, she it. she was still doing some rescue work back then. You've stopped now because you're more dedicated to your own collection and don't want to keep taking in rescues. Yeah. Come back, come back for me. You're good, dude. Here, I'm going to just hold him. Here. Yeah, there you go. He, he, can be, he can be wavy on the table. Oh my god. <sighs> Point in case. He can be a bit flaily too. There you go, bud. But yeah, the sentence was essentially, if he makes it, that's a miracle. Uh, but they had been having issues because they were eating. they were feeding live, weren't they? Yeah, they were um, having issues with him eating, and he was pretty small back then. He was tiny back then. Uh, back then, he might have been like my pinky no. around the, around the neck. Oh, neck, yeah. Yeah, around the neck, he was about as wide as my pinky, and it. I, I was still incredibly new at the time, but I was not hopeful because it was just. I didn't understand how you could come back from that, but boy, am I glad I was wrong. So I knew Snakes are quite resilient, man. They are, and I've since learned, learned that. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I was... That was our trip to SoCal. That was our trip to SoCal, which was me being maybe a month into like, all right, actually, I'm I've actually kind of, kind of taken an interest in this, and I, I actually got into this mostly through boas. They were what piqued my interest, because... You see what he's doing? Oh, was he doing it? The, he like, it was weird. No. The, was he doing the full 90, pretty much? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the boas were kind of what piqued my interest because they're, they're that full muscle and they're, they're, they're kind of huggy, which is like, it, it's a, it's a weird way to describe it, but. They don't want to fall. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't want to fall. And they'll just <laughs> onto you and something about that was really like, ah, oh, this is nice. I don't have to worry about the thing drooping out of my hands because it doesn't want to hold itself up. Like, a boa <laughs> sits there and it holds itself. You also are really infatuated with all just the muscles and the muscle is the movement and how you just feel their whole body. Because, I mean, their strike time compared to retics. Like, you've got reaction time with retics because they, they've got to kind of coil up. The bigger ones, you don't have to, you get less and less time because they coil less and less. But boas, he was my first example of how they don't need any coil. No, it was crazy. They just launch. Yeah, it's, they, and that's it's pretty insane. explosive. Insane. But to to your point, I have when I do feeding videos or like you know just videos of them striking, 
every time my sunglow bow would strike the rat, I would just like. It's I would, I, I'd, be, I'd be like, okay, I gotta add an explosion to the sound effect. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's so dramatic. It's, then, so it's this is a uh, black pine. Wow. Yeah, I really like. Um, so my goal with this, with uh, uh, this black pine specifically. Um, so from what I understand, oops, my bad. They are um, endangered from um, are, oh, of, yeah, of the pines, pines, and maybe wanting to hopefully breed more and kind of repopulate them and get them more popular in captivity at least. Um, also, they're just really beautiful, and everyone thinks it's an, it's an MBK, and I'm like, eh. You're That's right. that was the first thing I thought when I first when you first you know, I just saw the color. I was like, oh, sweet. MBK. Yeah, she has like a little different um, towards you can, the tail. Patterning. You can also see the pattern down along here. Right, right, right there. That's the pattern. She's actually the calmest of my pituifus. Yeah. You guys have done a lot of lot of research mm -hmm. in the short time you've been in it. Mm -hmm. you, your knowledge base that before we make doesn't seem to be like somebody that's just been. You guys don't seem like you've just gotten into it. Like, no, you, know, you we, guys have we, done a lot of studying. I could tell. Mm -hmm. I also make I keep her in check when she gets excited. I'm like, all right, we need to do the research first. <laughs> I know you're excited. It's a new thing. I I mean I get that glimmer in my eye too, just mentally like, oh, yeah, there it's are a new of, thing. There are but a lot I'm of species always, I I'm also get excited for the research, like. Because it's always fun finding out new things about these these creatures. So there are a lot of species I want to get into that I could easily get right now. Like um, I've always wanted some more arboreal stuff, like green tree pythons. But I yeah. like to I like to interact with my stuff. I like to touch them. I don't want to stress them out too much. She doesn't just want die. trophy animals. Mm -hmm. Like again, and, you can, they're definitely handle, handleable. But yeah, I mean, believe me, I want a green tree python and an emerald tree boa. I want both of those because they are stunning animals. But I don't want to do it wrong. So I need to make sure I have, and for them, I want to make sure I've got everything like perfect so for them. Oh yeah. No, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. This thing almost looks like an indigo. That's crazy. Yeah, almost. <sighs> Poor man's indigo. <laughs> yeah, we've heard them referred to as that. So <laughs> I named her Pompey. So it, I I put a reserve on her two days before uh, Jacob Leica came out with the whole Pompey thing with the black I think the black pastel red exanthic. All clown, you know, that crazy, that insane, Jean. crazy pro project, and so when I was like, "Hey, I got, I, I have this a black pastel female clown," everyone went crazy. Like, offered me like two thousand. I paid, you know, only a fraction of like two thousand, or like someone even offered me five thousand. I'm like, "She's mine." So I named her Pompeii just out of the irony of it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm keeping. I have other uh, projects for her in mind. So I, I don't think I caught what she's a. Just black pastel clown. Just black yeah. pastel clown. Mm -hmm. yeah. so you had people offering you five k for this. Yeah, because yeah. of the whole. His well, whole also project, because it was like black pastel was the the like the last right. gene that he he was like. Yeah. So everyone was on the market for black pastel clown. Be because pastel he held clowns. that gene out, right? And until the very end. Yeah, and then he was like, "This is what it is," and everyone lost their minds because she also got there like the day after he announced it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, "Because well, I, I remember you calling me excited on the phone when he did announce it, like." I just bought a snake that has the missing gene. Mm -hmm. Ah! Like you lost it, and I was like, okay. I don't understand. I, I don't understand. And then I looked up the Pompeii gene, and I went, Well, the Pompeii. Morph. Oh my morph. goodness! Yeah, morph. the Pompeii morph, not gene. Uh, I I looked it up to see what the what she was going nuts about, and I was like, okay, I get it a little bit now. And then she told me about all those offers, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> That's crazy. Definitely a gorgeous example of the mm -hmm. black pastel clown. clown. Clown is my favorite. No, no clown is. More pants it, down. Yeah, just, she's sense. also kind of got that eyeliner. I love that. that like, the, right my boyfriend just broke eyes. up with me and I just cried in the rain kind of look. <laughs> a little bit. I'm not targeting anyone with this. I'm yeah, you, you <laughs> use very like personal examples in it. Am I calling myself out for middle school? I don't know. Possibly, are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the contrast down there in the alien heads is pretty mm -hmm. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. yeah. so this is my prized possession girl. I got her uh, when she was only about six months old. She could wrap around my oh. my hand ease or my 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 leg. I just said leg and pointed to my arm. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> That's a cool leg you got there. <laughs> yeah, she could wrap around my arm, my leg. Come on, um, girl. Easily, bit. and she was underfed, malnourished, um, had stuck shed. Oh, the layers of stuck shed. Uh, but now it was also clear they had been live feeding because she had some fresh scars. Right? Had fresh scars, a little bit of like stuff like that, and she was my big first big commitment to you know like the snake and get you know also up to twenty the hobby. feet. 
Yeah, Knowing up to 20 feet long. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And so here he is, and she, or, I don't know, I'm getting my pronouns mixed, mixed up. <laughs> Did you say he? Yeah, I called you. Oh. I called her. <laughs> happens to the best of us. Yeah. I mean, she has the girl symbol up there, so I should you know, be on top of that. She kind of does, yeah. Right. Also, yeah, she yeah, just she, ate a little bit. She just, just ate don't touch the food bowl. a full meal. Yeah, unfortunately, gonna kind of have to because it's right in the handhold. Yeah, it's it's, she's, it's been a couple days, so. It's been a couple. But I'm not gonna and, do too much with her, but. Yeah, we're just gonna kind of pull her out. She's got a really nice shine to her. She's like, nope. I wanna go, yeah. I wanna go, I wanna go back in. But, um, when she hasn't just eaten, uh... She's a sweetheart. She she's a total sweetie. Um, uh, she she's one to, of our expo snakes. She's one of our expo snakes. She likes to climb on my head and use it as a perch. It oh, doesn't work very well because... Not anymore. Uh, used she used to just sit right at the top of your head. Um, now she's wearing probably 60 pounds, no meal. And, uh... She's great to hold because she just kind of harnesses up because she's long enough. She'll be like a belt and a harness. And it's really awesome to hold her and educate people on her. Because they're the longest species in the world. Mm -hmm. And people look at her and go, wow, so is that the longest she's going to get? And to look them in the eyes and go, no, she she's... will get longer. And watch as their jaws drop. She's only like, about... Uh two and a half years old right now yeah. and she still has a lot of growing to do She's and of course this enclosure crazy. is only going to last so much longer um, yeah. I plan on upgrading her to a much bigger one because I want to give them space also I let her out in the yard sometimes just to pee because yeah. I don't want to because <laughs> dealing with it in here is uh, it's frustrating because you gotta undo the whole thing you gotta take out all the water all the hides you probably gotta wash the hides in the water just to keep it all clean um, but then there's also just recutting the butcher paper and everything. It, it, it makes it a, a very long process. So when you can also just get them out in the yard and also get them moving, oh, yeah. I, either no, let the food get through them. The I mean, it, it's got benefits. It lets the food get through them. It gives them a little bit of exercise so they don't get overweight and just, just sit there. And then you don't have to clean up the poop. And thing. Exactly. <laughs> the enclosure. Have to clean the poop. Exactly. <laughs> the enclosure, because she's notorious for pooping in corners. So if people want to get a hold of you guys for anything, shows, just show animals, or I mean, this mm -hmm. is something you guys are going to do in education, like maybe yeah. going to parties and stuff with your animals? Mm -hmm. I've yeah. done a couple, actually. You, okay. You've okay. done a, a few uh, birthday parties with ball pythons, right? No, I brought Cecilia, too. You brought But Cecilia that was when too? she was still small. Yeah, you're right. That's when she was tiny. Um, but they can get a hold of you on Instagram mm -hmm. uh, at exotic entities. Dot exotic dot entities. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't. Or do I do have a Facebook page. Stuff. I don't use it as much, but I am active on there as well. Yeah. I try to be at least. And that's about it. Well, there'll be links down in the description for you to get a hold of these guys. This may be one of the best uh, Snakes Fans episodes. Thank you guys for yeah, uh, inviting yeah, you know. Thank you for the Starbucks. <laughs> I didn't think you would actually grab <laughs> I did get Starbucks. If you saw the vlog, then maybe you saw, you saw the Starbucks. Out. <laughs> um, yeah, great, great. Nice, guys. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. This was fun. So I'm just going to say we're sitting here with you guys, and you guys are going to say you're watching Triple B TV, and then... Snap. I can't snap, but you can't snap. Well, you can't snap. No, oh, I told you. Just no. fake it. Just fake like you are, and we'll make and it sound like the two of us are. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you guys have a name for your, your thing? Uh, the exotic, exotic Her, entities. It's exotic entities. The exotic uh, entities. Uh, entities. Again, okay. I'm on Instagram technically. I've got like three posts about our boas. I'm boa at boy. the boa boy. But you I'm never use like, it. You, I think you forget it exists. Uh, sometimes I forget it exists. Other times I'm just like, uh, it's just not a great name. It's cute. <laughs> and that's the problem. I'm handling these big hefty snakes most of the but time. But they also have and I've sand got boa, boa boy. <laughs> and I'm just like. Yeah, boa bro is taken, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was originally going to go with that. And she's like, nope, that's already taken. And I just went, damn. You're watching Triple B TV. TV. That's the one. Okay. Oh, we got that. Oh, we got that. Yeah. We'll have to splice it in. Uh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, Brian Cusco here. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Pooper. Yep. I love bloopers. What the we got to make sure we got. We have plenty of bloopers. You know. Yeah. Sometimes half of the video ends up being a blooper. So. I mean, that those are dead kind man. of the best. <laughs> that dead man and that girl. He's not crying dead. About He's not dead. Oh, you're his right. wife his is dead. His wife is dead. My apologies. The old man. Yeah, the they look like angry old man. 
But, uh, Look like that pissy neighbor that lives by himself because his wife died like 10 years ago. <laughs> he just hates everything, you know? He's just like... A bit of a kids. bit of an insensitive example, but But yes. it's accurate! Leave me alone! Look, I'm all for accuracy. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> oh, we'll have to redo that no. one. <laughs> It's too quick on the no, snap. No, it's worked. I'm gonna take that other yeah. one, splice it in. Oh, that one's gonna go into okay. the flippers. <laughs> it's a whole switcheroo. Triple B. <laughs> it's a switcheroo. Yeah.